Splatoon 3 is the most recent addition to the popular series and this time sports even more to do on top of the usual multiplayer madness. The result is one splatting good time. In Splatoon 3 you play as a cephalopod that is able to transform into a humanoid form and wield a range of ink spewing weapons. Depending on your choice you'll play as either an inkling or an octoling. After a brief tutorial you're able to dive right into the multiplayer or try out the single player mode. In single player you'll meet a cryptic old man known as Cuttlefish who tasks you with learning the ropes and also assisting with investigating the disappearance of the great zapfish. This is done by solving a few puzzles found in self-contained locations which are accessible via a kettle. Shortly after finishing the first few puzzles, the old man disappears down a massive hole, which leads to another location. Your character follows him, but when reaching the bottom, discovers three other inklings who have also been working for the old man as his agents, each with their own designation. However, they haven't seen him either and ultimately task you with finding him, completing puzzles along the way as the newly enlisted Agent 3. The story is paced quite nicely and has a twist or two along the way, but the real star are the puzzles that effectively function as the missions. You can tackle them in any order you see fit, but they are quite inventive and feature a fair share of enemies and cool feats to perform with your weaponry. The combination of the combat and the puzzle solving makes for some incredibly entertaining gameplay. There are even some boss fights along the way as part of the plot and they are pretty great. At its core, Splatoon 3 is a shooter that takes place from a third person perspective. You play as an inkling or octoling and must use a selection of ink spewing weapon types to either defeat enemies or solve puzzles. There are 11 different weapon types, each with their own variants which boast certain stats. From single shot long range guns to more close range types like the roller, you'll be hard pressed to not find something that suits your playstyle. Additionally, there are gear items to be unlocked which have perks attached to them that can aid you in combat. The gear also provides you with the opportunity to customize your character with a stylish aesthetic to set them apart from characters belonging to other players. The story mode will take you to a few hub areas that contain kettles which transport you to a puzzle location. Puzzles come in different forms and can be as simple as using a certain weapon to get through to the exit or doing some tricky platforming. Completing the puzzles reward you with power eggs which are the main currency and can be used to clear the strange furry substance plaguing the hub areas which allows access to even more kettles. These start off pretty easy but there are a good number of them that will see you doing quite a few attempts before getting it right. They aren't too punishing either since you're allowed 3 failures before having to restart a checkpoint which only costs about 20 power eggs. The single player part of Splatoon 3 does a good job of preparing you for the frantic multiplayer offering that will keep you coming back. The main mode on offer is Turf War and tasks each team of 4 with inking as much of the map as possible within the space of 3 minutes. The team that has covered the most ground with their ink is the victor. The result is a frenetic rush to cover the battlefield in ink while defending your ink turf from the opposing team and also avoiding getting splattered yourself. It's all a lot of fun and while initially the match length seems a bit short, it's actually the perfect length for this game type. Once enough experience in Turf War is gained and you make it to level 10, you'll be able to try out Anarchy Battles. This mode offers more objective based gameplay such as controlling zones or capturing clams and then throwing it into a goal at the opposing team's base. It's a nice change of pace if you want to play something other than Turf War, however it is a lot more competitive. Also it could do with some refinements such as allowing the changing of loadouts between deaths and easier communication options. After all is said and done, you and your teammates will be rewarded with medals for any feats performed in the match in addition to XP which will contribute to your level. Level up and you'll gain access to new weapons, gear and items in the game's many shops. Weapons are purchased using a Sheldon license, a currency gained either by leveling up or consistently using a particular weapon in online matches. The best part is that you are able to test every single weapon available in the game before unlocking it, even the ones that are only unlocked at the max level of 30. Better yet, you can opt to spend 3 Sheldon licenses to unlock any weapon before reaching the required level to access it. It's nice to have the option and it's great for returning players who already have a favorite weapon type and would like to unlock one that's a little higher up on the list. Aside from the competitive multiplayer, Splatoon 3 also offers cooperative fun for 2-4 players with a game called Salmon Run. Your goal is to defeat waves of enemies called Salmonids including some unique boss types while collecting the golden eggs that they drop. Generally, these last for 3 waves, however you'll periodically be thrown into a special extra wave featuring a King Salmonid which involves a special strategy in order to beat it. This happens all while your team cycles through the supplied weapons, allowing each member to alter their playstyle each round. Not 
All is perfect in the locale of Splatsville though, as Splatoon 3 does fall victim to frequent disconnects when indulging in the multiplayer. When this happens to a player during a match, it is immediately ruled a no contest and any potential XP to be gained is forfeited by both sides. It's not the biggest obstacle, as matchmaking is generally quite fast, but it can be quite frustrating when nearing the end of a match. Visually, Splatoon 3 looks fantastic. It sports the same visual style as its predecessors, but it looks really great. The ink looks super glossy and it runs at a consistent 60 frames per second even when things become a bit chaotic. There's no spoken word in the game since the characters spout gibberish when speaking, but it is pretty cute. The splat sound effects never got old even after hours of playing and the soundtrack is quite catchy. Splatoon 3 is so much fun. The story is intriguing enough to serve as a backdrop as you take on the many excellent puzzles in the single player mode, plus it does a great job at preparing you for the madness that is the multiplayer. Speaking of, Turf War is sure to get you hooked after a few matches and with so many weapon types to choose from, it shouldn't be an issue finding one that suits you best. It's also so inviting since you don't have to be the best player on the team and you can still contribute to your team's victory by inking as much of the battlefield as possible. There is a fair amount of disconnecting that happens in multiplayer though, which can derail your enjoyment somewhat. Thankfully the matchmaking is quite fast, so you won't have to wait too long to jump back into the action. Additionally, events happen every few weeks affording players the opportunity to enhance their gear with the rewards. Splatoon 3 is an incredibly stylish and absolutely fun experience that offers so much for both new and returning players. Personally, I haven't been this hooked on a multiplayer experience in ages. If you enjoyed this review, please don't forget to hit that like button and if you got your hands on Splatoon 3, let us know what you thought of the game in the comment section below. Let's have a conversation. For more gaming news and reviews, check out Envision Games.